you showed up at my grandpa's house and came in and and seen each other for two years mm -hmm. or over two years actually and then we just hugged and it was like like, like we'd never, never left. left. Oh. <laughs> okay. Today's topic for Taco Tuesday, and yes, we know not the food taco, like T -A wait, which way would it go? T A L K dash O Taco. Talk we're talking. One of you suggested that because we were gonna call it Let's Talk Tuesday, and somebody said, What about Taco Tuesday? And we it's thought that was idea. hilarious. So whoever you are. It's now called Taco Tuesday. So it's Thank our second you. installment of Taco Tuesday. And we're gonna talk about something that we don't talk about very often just because it doesn't come up in normal everyday life. Mm -mm. And that is um, Wiener that body Schnitzel. Can you both try to come up with something funny to say? <laughs> um, <laughs> wiener Schnitzel. That's the first thing that came to mind for whatever reason. I don't even know what Wiener Schnitzel is. It's like a it's like a hot dog, you know. Is it? Maybe not. Um, we'll so, learn that but we're going to talk about our love story. Um, mm -mm -mm. That means Why we don't should... we just show it live? This is our love story. We should just like... <laughs> Gross. Maybe we should make it a little bit before. Just I'm gonna, my, like, my upper lip is starting to sweat. It is? Are you nervous? I think so. My hands are a little sweaty too. Anyways. So today we're going to talk about our love story. And how we met. And when we got married. And just how we've like kind of grown and changed. And maybe our goals for the future. I don't know. Not necessarily goals. But our... I don't know. Our outlook for the future? Yeah, maybe. And I also it gives them more. It gives them more of a backstory just on us in general and our, our family a little bit. I think. Yeah. So, so we actually going to tell the actual story. Well, no, we're going to tell a false. Story. Like from beginning. We're gonna make one up. Okay. <laughs> I was living in Germany at the time. Um, and I was a journalist who came. To well, how old were we? Were, how old were we when we met? We were eighteen years old when we met both of us. We're pretty I, close in age. Megan and I are only nine months apart in age. So I was only had only been eighteen for two weeks. When we met, so I was barely you were eighteen. Just I was barely a baby. there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we both showed up, young. So you get to your little freshman. dorm room, and on the first day, which was a Thursday, right? I don't, I don't remember. The Thursday day. in June, it was like um, you're you're drop off your stuff, and then you're supposed to go. Is someone crying? Yes. Someone's crying. Hang on. Let's pause this. Okay. <laughs> Taken care of. Why was he crying? Oh, a little disagreement about iPads. Okay, so where were we? <laughs> okay, so... We didn't even get past, like, no. showing up at college. Dang no. it. So, we show up at your little dorm, you put your stuff down, and then there's, like, a little sign that says, go to this part of campus, you're going to you're gonna be an orientation group. Student orientation, And, yeah, like, like, it gave you, like, a number and a letter or something, like 16C, I think. All I know, I don't remember, I just I just know we, we didn't know which group we were supposed to go yeah, to. Yeah, so we... I remember I left with my roommate, Mary... You left with your roommate Troy. Mm -hmm. We show uh, we didn't know each other. We showed up at the field. Mary and I did. I'll just tell from our the story. Quad. And as soon as we showed up, we realized, oh, we didn't look at that number. We need that because it was just like a sea of people grouping up with like signs of which group. And and I think about the middle, we just said, let's go to this group. And were we already was I already there? I don't know. Well, because we basically did the same thing, my friend and I, and we just. So we both ended up in the same group, so it came to come so, Which down is to crazy. Somehow. And we just sat down, and then the group leader kind of had us go around and introduce our, ourselves, just give our names. We went around, and... You immediately caught my eye. We were right across from each other. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I was wearing thought, my overalls. Yeah. Were pretty cute. They were pretty good overalls, because overalls were all their age. I guess they, they were, were loose then. They were again, right? For you youngins, they were loose. Um, and so we looked, I looked across the, the thing... The circle across a crowded <laughs> room, just like that. And I saw this cute girl, and we just looked at each other. We locked we, eyes. We locked and we smiled for a long time. And I don't know why, but we both inside of our minds, because usually I wasn't that confident with girls. I wasn't. I was not. Confident. And so 
but we both decided just to keep smiling and looking at each other. And it probably wasn't that long. It just oh, felt gosh, like it felt like it's like where you're like starting to sweat. <laughs> but it was also incredibly the exhilarating. Contest. Yeah. Um, so we did that. And then some girls came over and they're like, are you so-and-so? You're supposed to be in our group. I don't know how they knew. To us. To, yeah. yeah. How did they know? I don't know. So they took you and I was like, dang it. That guy was cute. And you guys so, were gone. So really it was right after day. you introduced yourself. You're gone. But didn't we kind of see each other every once in a while? Yeah, I think we were kind of... Because your orientation group was like doing a tour of campus. Yeah, and you were... So everyone was kind of walking around. You kind of... you we I noticed... We'd like pass each other by and I'd be like, well, there's that guy that was really cute. <laughs> um, and so that was Thursday. And then Friday night there was a dance. Right. And um, showed up at the dance and saw you. Mm -hmm. But you were leaving the dance. Why were you leaving? Because uh, I wasn't feeling very... I wasn't in a social mood, which is not uncommon for me. I'm not that social of a person. So I'm like, I'm done with this dance. So you and two other boys were leaving, and I happened to have two girls with me. So somehow, You had your posse. I was not confident with boys in high school. I was not, I didn't date very many people, but somehow, which I, I mean, I think there's like some meaning in this. I was like, let's go. And we followed you. You're about 100 yards out. And we were walking <laughs> right behind you, and I said... Where do you think you're going? Which is like you, you crazy were, you not were all like, sassy. like me. I know. I'm like, put my hand on my hip. I'm like, where do you think you're going? And you turned around and you're like, because you and I were, and you're like, what did you say? I don't know. I'm going. You're like, I'm, I'm leaving. coming back to the dance going with back you. To the do did I? Yeah, you're like, well, I'm coming to the dance. Like, really? you got what I was oh, saying. I, I didn't, I forgot. That. And then you immediately came and I grabbed your hand. Yeah, and you like led me back. I was like trembling and I was hoping you weren't feeling that my hand was trembling. <laughs> I didn't notice. Totally unlike me. I am not kidding. Totally unlike me. You don't do that anymore with anybody <laughs> anymore to dance. No, I just was never that forward with boys. But I was like, I'm in college. I'm going to turn over a new leaf and I like this guy. I'm going to be confident in yes. myself. Um, and so we went back and we danced. Immediately there was a slow song. Mm -hmm. We went right onto the dance floor or whatever's outside. And started dancing. And, and we were like all wrapped up in yeah. each other. <laughs> no. no, not quite. <laughs> but you were a really good dancer, I felt. Even though it's... Like, I mean, how you're mean? slow dancing. Yeah. But I just felt like you held me so... Like, because sometimes you dance with boys and you feel like, am I... It's like a wet noodle. Like, what's going on here? Like, and their hands are like drifting and they don't know where to put them. And, but you were so... I felt like manly about it. You held my hand. All right. Put your hand on my waist. And I trembled through the whole thing, but I was totally excited. And then we hung out for a little bit longer and then left, right? Then I left. You left? I still him. left. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was still intent on leaving. Oh Sorry. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I was still going to get out of there. Well, so there was a dance the next night, too. And I looked Man, a lot for, of dances. But you didn't go. Oh. So I danced with another boy who asked me on a date oh. before you did. Okay, well. Um, and so... Where is he now? Who yeah. knows? Who cares? So that was Saturday night. Sunday, so when you go to BYU, it's mostly Mormons, right? And so you're in wards and... Um, Which is a congregation. Yeah, you're in congregations and they're assigned. You don't just choose one or choose a time or anything. They're assigned by where you live. Right. And um, so I showed up at mine and, you know, sat down for church. And you can tell your side of the story, but I just sat down, I remember, and just doing like the look around because it's like brand new. Mm -hmm. And I looked... And you were like four rows up, like looking right down at me, smiling. <laughs> well, because I, I know I noticed that you were up there, and I'm like, oh, there's that girl, and and then you look back at me. So which was crazy. It was like that. It was like electric to me. Like that guy's in my ward. And then we saw each other again, like walking in. Like I was walking out, and you were walking in, and we kind of met at some door. I was yeah. really there to see you, but then you're like you're leaving, and I couldn't be like, oh yeah, I was coming to see you. We're telling. So, you, this is taking a long time, but anyways, we then, haven't even gotten past the first three days of our relationship. <laughs> And um, we just hit it off, yep. just completely hit it off. Mm -hmm. And within a few days, we were like best friends. Right, just doing everything together. Um, I just look back at that time, and I totally believe in um, everything has meaning. I'm one of those if you call think, it fate, call, call it, it karma. karma. I totally believe that that quote. yes, that everything comes together and has meaning. And I think that we were soulmates, or that we are soulmates, and that we recognized each other when we met because it was like clunk was it that it was noise? that beautiful clunk <laughs> um but we Come were on. just like locked and um not like thinking boyfriend or girlfriend but like immediately 
No, we were hanging out and we were talking like a lot. Like pouring our souls out to yeah, each other. Yeah, we were sharing all of our thoughts just a and few feelings. Days. And um, I hadn't dated much in high school. I'm a little bit intense and I'm a little bit um, obnoxious. Really? I hadn't caught that yet. It's lovable. It's lovable. This is a new new thing. I didn't yes. know that. And um, so, you know, that's not typically... I wasn't great at, like, flirting and um, maybe being what a high school teenage boy is looking for in a oh, girlfriend. Right. Um, luckily for you, I was looking for something different than luckily, the average girl. But I remember that we went for this walk one night, and I was, like, giving you all my, like, feminist theories and my angst at, like, how men treat women, which is really the way to secure a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I really you couldn't you know, help it though. I couldn't, and um, I think okay. I even remember like, why are you talking about this? But you were so interested. Well, they were actually they were new ideas to me, and I found them very interesting. I hadn't given that much thought as a teenage boy to how girls, I don't know, want to be treated or whatever. I don't know, um, or how you felt like bad the, about something. Yeah, the nuances of like how men. I always remember talking about how the nuances of men like making you feel less. Right. Or like, oh, aren't you sweet? Instead of treating you like an equal or as a peer, and you were actually interested. No, I thought it was great. It was very, it was interesting and enlightening. So. And I was like, <laughs> so we were best friends, and then it kind of, you know, grew into love very, very, very quickly. And I think two weeks after we professed our our like, our like for each other, we professed our love for each other. Two weeks later, two and a half weeks later. Yeah. So it was very quick, um, yeah, but. No um the clincher is that what you would say i don't know what i'm not sure where you're going we with fell that. in love we were 18 but which is a little young to be falling in love we I wanted mean, to get married yeah i mean we were like talking about marriage how we want to spend our lives together but the what what why couldn't we get married oh so what kind of stopped that train or slowed it down was that i was i was going to go serve a mission for our church which is a very normal thing for young men to do in the lds church and that was definitely a plan of mine. So I had to go do that. Or you wanted to go do that. I wanted to go do that. And it was totally my plan. So what happened is I left after that summer term. I went home and started getting ready to go on my mission, which I didn't. I then left on in November For of two? that year. No, no, no. Early yeah, December. I was thinking about 20 years ago right now. You were just about to leave. Oh, well, yeah, 20 you're right. years ago. And um, we were just so close at this point, and uh, but we also knew we didn't want to make any promises to each other. No, I we were when so I was, in love. But no, when I was leaving, I was like, "Look, you don't you don't need to wait for me. I don't want to expect you to just whatever you know, that means." And he also didn't want the pressure either. Mm -hmm. Like you know, we didn't know two years is a long time, especially eighteen to twenty or nineteen to twenty one. That's a long. Those are some really formative years. So. Looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, we were totally in love when we were best friends. Like, that was going to work out. But we had never been in love before. We didn't know. Yeah. And so you left. We wrote paper letters for two years, weekly. Pen to paper. Oh, it was great. I, we have them in storage. We'll get them out someday. So we wrote. I came home. So 18 years ago, you came home. Right. And it was at Christmas time. December 23rd. Yeah, and I came to see... 2000, no, uh, 1999. In this my... in the 1900s. Yes, that's true. And my grandparents happened to live in the town. You were you live coming in. home too. Yeah. Yeah, and I convinced my parents we should go to my grandparents for Christmas. And, I wonder um, why I did that. Yeah, I don't know. And you came over a few days after Christmas, and um, you showed up at my grandpa's house, and came in, and hadn't seen each other for two years, mm -hmm. or over two years actually. And then we just hugged, and it was like, like, like we never, never left. left. Oh. <laughs> It was great though. I remember like just, it was the longest, greatest, sweetest hug. And um, it was, yeah, like we were so familiar with each other. Even though we'd only been together for a few months before he left. It was just a few months, really just no, a few weeks where we lived in the same town. I know, but I think, and we've said this before, but I think going on my mission and us having to really get to know each other through letters was really of an important part of our relationship. And it was... Yeah, because we weren't talking really cool. about like getting married or anything like that. No, we were just it was sharing our lives. Sharing like, what we were doing. Yeah. And and that was that was I think important for us. We really got to know each other in that way with no physical contact whatsoever for that amount of time. And yeah, that you like shared your struggles and your fears and I talked about what I was studying. I mean, we just really opened our hearts to each other about yeah. our lives and and kind of went more back to best friends. Mm -hmm. Um still said I love you though in the letters. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. And so and then in January, um, and then we were engaged in February. Yeah. 
pretty quick. Crazy. And so married. Even, that's still pretty quick. I mean, that, that's still young as far as the world goes. As oh, absolutely. As as I was 20. We got married two months after that in April. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I was 20. Yeah. Um, 21 after we got married. You were 21 already. And um, we lived happily ever after. Yeah, basically. I mean, obviously there's lots in there, but we we went and had our first jobs at a summer camp together. and Lived in a little cabin with no running water and bathroom. <laughs> and we were living the poor life and so had, a, had Elijah about a year and a half after we were married. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot of time before we had kids. And so sometimes people say like, oh, your relationship changes when you have kids or, you know, the love is different. But it was so immediate for us that um, I felt like we only grew closer once we had kids. Yeah, I didn't feel like it was a Yeah, like your a love wedge. and esteem grows as you watch your best friend and your partner be the parent to your child. Right. Uh, but I look back, too, at those days, and we felt so old, but yet we, we had no idea who, were even, who we even were yet. Yeah, we've grown a so lot. So much and changed so much. I think, but not in a way we're, like, unexpected. It's kind of weird, because, like, it's like you became the person I already thought you were. Right. And yet... You still surprise me sometimes. You surprise me with who you are sometimes, like how cool you are, like things like that. Or like I wouldn't call it cool. It's weird because we've been together since we were teenagers. So it's like there's not a lot of stories you can tell that I don't know. <laughs> but yet I am always... Only if I see it on Facebook before you do. But I'll see you grow and evolve and it'll be pleasantly surprising. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's... We, um, we've been really happily married for now 17 years. Yeah. 17 and a half years. 17 and a half years. And um, absolutely there were hard times. They were usually when we were exhausted, mm -hmm. um, stressed. Yeah. You know, maybe we had a new baby or just not enough money. But um, I think we handled it pretty well. We haven't been big arguers because you're not good at it. I'm a horrible arguer. Yes. If you ever want to get in an argument with someone that you know you're going to win, argue with me. So that's not really very fun for me just to like, ah, and then he's like, ah. <laughs> hey. I'm no, quite. I just mean like emotionally, he's just like, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right, you're right. I'm like, well, that wasn't very fun. You didn't really have a fight. <laughs> that would have been horrible on a debate team. It's yes. a good thing I didn't. And so um, that helped me to like, to maybe not try to win arguments all the time because I always won, but then I felt kind of ashamed that I was, why was I even trying to win? And so we really... I think also helped us that you studied what you studied. Yeah, so I, I majored in marriage, family, and human development. Well, yeah, it's, it's great if you want to be a family therapist, but I ended up not wanting to be that, so that didn't... You would have been a good family <clears> therapist. I graduated in that, and that's as far as it went. I think that was really great. I mean, we were like in our early 20s reading all these books on communication and respect, and what? yeah, and um, I think we both felt like ugly ducklings for most of our life together. Because we were. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just didn't... We were always trying to fit in, but feeling like we never could quite do it. Like, we knew we fit in with each other, but we didn't see where we fit in with the world. Yeah, and I, I remember when I was 18 and I'd fallen in love with you, I just remember saying, like, when I'm with him, it's like I'm quiet inside. Mm. I just felt, felt so smooth inside, so peaceful. You know, when you're with other people, I don't know, you were the first and really only person that has ever made me feel that way. Hashtag meant to be, or is it hashtag, hashtag, hashtag meant to blessed. be? <laughs> blessed. So um, then we spent probably 10 years of our marriage, yes, 10 years of our marriage trying to be ducklings. Right. Trying, trying to, to build a life that looked like we'd... everybody else. Right. And we were kind of terrible at it. Yeah. And we were getting more and more lost. Yeah. And, um, and it was about six years ago, seven years ago, where we started to just break free a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more until we really just started to accept that like we're not supposed to be like everybody else we're supposed to be like us and that's cool <sighs> no but that it's okay and so we I think everybody's an ugly duckling in some ways and everybody's a swan but you just kind of have to figure out what that means for you and so then yeah we here we are and we're definitely more in love than ever mm -hmm. ever and I know it drives our kids crazy because because we're up here talking about it and they're downstairs fighting with yeah, each other. Yes, no, but we're still total best friends and we have such a good time together. And um, 
I think that they, I know that they like that and I know that's really good for them, but I think probably sometimes, I know they are, like we'll be hugging and they'll like try to get in it. Yeah, they want to hug too. Yeah, they, like, no, they'll I watch think. us kiss and the older ones are like, gross, but like the other ones are like, I want to kiss. And Peter. <laughs> yes. Eve and Jerry, Eve will like, if I kiss you, she comes over like, <laughs> it's like, uh, that makes me feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> she but, goes in for the kill. Yeah, so, but I think, I remember reading that you can do nothing better for your kids than to love their parent. Right, to love so, each other. It's like, check. We can do that. I could do that. And I, I also think um, that before I came to this life, that if God asked me, you know, what kind of life do you want and challenges and good, what do you want? I'm sure I said, you know what, I can do lots of hard stuff, but I want to be with Mike. Um, I don't care if we're poor. I don't care if we're struggling. If we're together, that's all I. That's all I need. All I need is love, man. Well, or all like I need is you. Like that share. I so, get you, babe. Yeah, and I, um, I'll have these dreams, recurring dreams. Mike knows about them, where I'm like getting married to someone else, and I'll be like, no, but there's somebody, somebody I love, like somebody that's really important to me, and then I'll be like, it's Mike, and I'll like search for you, or I'll have dreams where you don't remember me. I'm like, remember? <laughs> we're like everything. We're, We're like everything. I have those dreams all the time. So that's it. That's our story. Is our that, love. Yeah. How do we close it's that? It's not up? end. It's not over. And I think we. I think I. I realized this the other day that you always think you've sort of arrived already in life. Like, okay, we're here. That's it. But you forget. Like, we've still got. Who knows how many years together to grow? Eternity. And to do things. Yeah. Forever. Forever. And so it, it'll just keep on going. So our love story will continue. So we're still in the middle of it. You know, I'll end by saying the other day, it was actually just yesterday, I was looking at these wrinkles right here. Oh. And I've, I have got, wrinkles them, right I've there? got them too. And uh, how I've been with you since you were a teenage boy. <laughs> it's true. And now I'm I watching, didn't have these wrinkles anymore. I'm watching you become, on, you know, an older man and eventually an old man. And I felt like just looking at those wrinkles, like what a privilege it is to be here and to like watch those wrinkles form. You know, mm. like, I guess to me, when I looked at him yesterday, it kind of represented like all that we've been through, all the struggles and gosh, we've had struggles, you know, trying to find our way through life mm -hmm. and stresses and growth and happiness and tears and joy. And we've had all of them. And I felt like these little guys are kind of like holding those memories right there. And like, I don't know. Mm. It's just like the passage of time. I can see it on your face. And we're going to see it together until eventually, like, I have, like, eyelids that, like, I can't wear, like, eyeshadow because my eyelids are so far down, you know? And um, my my whole skin will just be wrinkly and soft and saggy. But it'll that's, still be us. That's great. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. It's okay to get old together. It's great to get old together. So find somebody... I don't know. I don't know how to finish that. Well, I will say this, that Megan is, I've always been amazed by Megan. And I was from early on when I first, I think, really talked with Megan. And I've told this before, I really, I think I fell in love with Megan's brain before. I mean, I, that sounds weird, but I love how Megan thinks. I love how she expresses herself. And Megan, to me, actually, I think more than making me still inside, I think <clears throat> brought me more alive because um, I don't know. I think I needed someone to invigorate my mind and my imagination, and that's what Megan does. So. And to annoy you just a little bit. <laughs> no. <It's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody annoys their spouse at some point. It's okay. All right. So. Well, I do love you. I love you too. Now you have a little lipstick on. Mm. And we love you guys too. And I think the reason we wanted to share this is because. We want you to know, no matter what your past has been, that love can be your future and companionship and being with someone, one person for the rest of your life and for the rest of time is the biggest blessing imaginable. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're down on that and sometimes people say that's not natural, but I think there's nothing more natural than two becoming one. So love is real and it's out there. And as long as you do your part to grow and to become better, you will have 
a beautiful, the chance at a beautiful relationship with someone. Yeah. And uh, we love you guys. We'll talk to you later. See ya.